Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this ESL webinar. I am Jurgen Rodenhuis. I am one of the software engineers of the ESL server software. And I will be talking to you today about templates and conditionals. And uh, let's get started right away. Um, this is a live stream. You can ask questions while we're going. Uh, there is a bit of a delay and of course I'm doing my presentation. So uh, feel free to ask and I'll get back to it if it's uh, a good question. And uh, there is a bit of a delay, like I said. You can also later rewatch the episode. And at the end of this session, there will be a Q and A. Um, so let's get right into it. I have uh, on the screen the ESL server software running. Uh, the ESLs have been connected to a product. I have one on my desk here, uh, which is this one, the uh, carrots. And I have two right behind me, uh, a bunter mix and a shampoo. And as you can see, they all have the same layout. Uh, a black top bar and the price. Well, the thing is with ESLs, if you change the price, the ESL changes along with it. So let me give you a small example of that. I've prepared a SQL statement to put a discount on our carrots. So I put the statement in the input folder. It's being processed. And as you can see, there is a new assignment created for that ESL connected to the Bonduelle carrots. And the price went down to 79 cents a can. But you might have noticed something. It's still going to use the same black and white template. But you want customers to know that this item is in discount today. You want them to uh, be attracted to this product. So. In order to do that, we are going to use a template. And let me get to the template screen here. These are our templates. This, for instance, is the template I was just using a second ago. This is the uh, normal template. If I connect it to a product that doesn't exist and it's not found, it will show this template. But we have an item that's on discount, so let's create a new template to show that discount. So we go to the bottom, we click new template. This is the seven and a half inch model. So let's click that variant. Let's give it a file name. Discount underscore seven underscore five. And the template is created. Also, don't forget to enable this template when you are ready. So. After we've created it, we get this editor screen at the bottom right. This is the actual uh, template that we are designing right now. So the uh, ESL that I'm using, the 750R, can show black, white and red. We've only used black and white in a normal template. So if we're going for the discount, we want to attract people to that discount. So let's use red as well. And let's do something a bit similar. Let's place a large bar at the top. And instead of a black one, we're going to turn it red. Start it at the top left. Make it as wide as the screen. You can see the width at the top. Those are a couple of uh, reminders that you know what size of screen you're working with. So 640 pixels wide, 80 pixels high. And let's put some text in there. What do we want to show there? Well, like with the normal template, we want to show the product's description. But the text is pretty small. So let's first change the color to white. And let's blow up the font to a pretty big size. Oh, now it's overflowing. Let's just say shrink to fit. We're going to make it just as big as the top bar was 78 pixels high, but now it's to the left. Like with all uh, text processors, we're just going to center it. And in fact, 
let's have a little bit of a help while we're designing it. Let's select the product that we're working with, the Bon Duel Carrots. Now, we want to uh, attract attention. So, first of all, we have a red top bar. Let's also add a small picture of a sale icon. We have several items here. Let's use this one. Yeah, the item is on sale. Oh, I don't want another picture. I'm sorry. Yeah, there we go. And then in the middle, we want to show that there is a new price, a new sell price. And again, we want to make it stand out. So we'll choose another color, make the font bigger. I'm going to make it even bigger than that. Boom. People are going to notice that one. But we also want to show customers the before price. So let's put another little text box at the top left. Keep that text black. Show the standard price. Also blow up that font a little bit. There we go. And since it's the old price, let's take the line tool and draw a line through it. We're going to make that line a bit thicker. And you can also turn it. There we go. Well, there's one more thing that I didn't do yet. Not only do I want to show the price, I also want to show the currency symbol. Let's do the same for this one. Currency symbol and the price or the discount price. There we go. Let's put that line back on top. Save the template. But now we have a little bit of an issue. We want to use this template, but we only want to use it when the item is actually being discounted. So here's the next fun thing, the conditional. A conditional means that only under certain conditions, a template will be used. And in this case, we've shown that the standard price is higher than the sell price. So let's turn that into a piece of computer logic. Let's say if the field containing the standard price is greater than the value in the field called sell price, use this template. And now we have a conditional. We apply these new templates, go back to the ESL screen, and well, wouldn't you know, two templates are now going to change. This Bon Duel Carrots one will change to this. And the Bon Duel Bunter mix that I had behind me happened to be on sale even before we started. But the uh, Schwarzkopf Peach wasn't. So now you have a clear distinction between the two templates. There is a discounted item and there is the normal item. This one drags, uh, attracts your attention immediately because of the use of color. And using templates and conditionals, we can also do a couple of more fun things. Uh, as a matter of fact, I already created another template a template called welcome. Let's have a look at it. This template is also using uh, the description and the field containing the content. Obviously, this one doesn't work, but I created a dummy product. That product is called hello, and the description is welcome. and the content is to this store. Now, we're going to use this template as well. And templates are always processed top to bottom. So let's float this one to the top. 
like I said, we have a product called Hello, and we only want to use this one product. So let's say in the conditional that we want to use this template if that field called product ID equals the word hello. And apply that. Let's go back to our ESLs and let's reassign the uh, ESL here on the desk to this product called hello. And there you go. In a couple of seconds, it will change the template to welcome to this store. So you can also use an ESL as a promotional device. And the fun thing is, since it's looking for the uh, changes in the database, we can change the database around and also update the template that is, all, uh, that is going to appear on the screen in a second. Ah, here comes the new template. And obviously, this template is now in English. It says, welcome to this store. But say you have a franchise that spans around the globe and you have uh, a French store. Well, you do want to use this template again. And like I said, it's using the database. So let's update the database and change welcome into bienvenue. So we're going to copy that into the input folder. It's being processed immediately. We're going back to the ESL server. As you can see, there's a new template being created. And now it's going to show us Bienvenue dans ce boutique. That allows us to create promotional images based on a conditional, but that can also change with uh, changes in the database. And now some of you are probably thinking, well, I don't want to do that. I don't want to place those items in my product database. That just kind, kind of feels eh, icky. I can understand that. You want to keep your product database clean, especially if you are running a very large store and have up to a thousand different items in your product database. You want to keep track of what you're doing. So you can also manage it with somewhat of a content management system. So I prepared that as well. And I, uh, there is a little bit more of an explanation for that. Instead of linking the ESL to a product, we're going to tell the ESL server that we want to link that uh, ESL to a certain picture. So I have here an XML file. It's quite easy. It's got the name of the, uh, or the MAC address of the ESL that we want to connect it to. Just to clarify, the uh, MAC address is the unique address of the ESL that the ESL server uses to keep track of which unique ESL is connected to which unique product. It's on the back of a unit. So let me take this unit, for example. There's a small barcode on the back and beneath it, it shows the text of which uh, MAC address it has, its unique address. And in doing so, we take that MAC address we put that name in the uh, XML file and the XML file's contents are quite easy. It's an ESL image info file because you need to explain in XML what kind of an XML it is. There's an image file. We want to use promo.bmp. We're going to connect it to the ID hello and we're going to place a note with it so we can see in the ESL server what it is. Well. As you can see, it's a picture of the Mona Lisa. And that picture is stored in promo.bmp. So let's take both that XML and the picture to show it and place it in the input folder. And like with the uh, SQL queries, it's processed immediately. If we go to ESL server, well, there we go. 
a picture of the Mona Lisa will be placed on the ESL any second now. It's a pretty big picture, so it's going to take a while. So let me take you along with that picture. Um, like I said in the templates, there is a certain width and height to each ESL. So I created a bitmap and let's open it in paint. And as you can see at the bottom, the size is 384 by 640 pixels, the same size as the ESL. And an ESL can show black, white, and red. So if we zoom in very far, we can see that it's just black, white, and uh, red dots all over the screen, creating Mona Lisa's face. You can go wild with, with ESLs. You can do all kinds of crazy stuff, as long as you use the black, white, and red on this label. So let's go back to the ESL server. Like I thought, it's still sending the image data. It's uh, compressing data before sending it wirelessly to the ESLs using the uh, base station that I have on my desk here. Um, because it is a wireless connection and these devices are built to last, they run on a couple of batteries and they can run for years and years, um, the amount of data being sent through the air is a bit lower than you would expect from, say, Wi-Fi. But if you, uh, you probably noticed, if you're using a laptop with Wi-Fi, if you turn the Wi-Fi off, suddenly your laptop can last a lot longer. So we're definitely not using Wi-Fi in these devices. We're using a protocol called uh, Zigbee or similar to Zigbee. So in the meantime, while I was talking and explaining it to you, the picture was actually sent to the ESL and as you can see we have a nice black white and red rendition of the Mona Lisa in pixel perfect quality and that in a nutshell is how you use templates and conditionals I created a template in a couple of minutes I linked a product to a new uh, promotional image in just a matter of minutes. I change data in the database just by moving in small uh, SQL query files. It's just that easy to use. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions left, we are now going over to the Q&A session. I would like to thank you for watching and have a great day. Thank you.